Hey guys, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. And today's video is sort of going to be split. In the beginning of the video, I'm just going to be talking about channel updates and welcoming everybody that's new and just kind of going over some stuff that I talked about way in the beginning of the channel, but just some things that I really want everybody that's new to the channel to understand and know just a little bit about me and more about what I'm trying to accomplish with my channel and of course say thank you for everybody who's been with me from the start and thank everybody that's new so please follow along and uh, the second half of the video I will be discussing deaths and disappearances that have occurred in the last few years on Mount Whitney which is the highest peak in the continental United States. Hey guys so I just wanted to make this quick video I'm gonna have a video following this on uh some information about Mount Whitney and how there's been increasingly more people going missing and unfortunately dying. Mount Whitney is the tallest mountain in the continental United States. I'm going to get into that more, but I just wanted to uh, sort of introduce myself because the channel has been growing a lot lately um, over the last week. And so those of you that have never seen me before or anything, I just wanted to say hi and say thank you for subscribing and welcome. And also just to tell you a little bit about my channel, I started the channel uh, about a year ago during the COVID to try and do something creative and to reach people. I've always been into outdoors and hiking and uh, I also wanted to do something to help our fallen comrades, people that have gone missing on their hikes. And I noticed that there was a huge disconnect between a lot of missing cases, not just with missing hikers, but in all types of uh, things in you know murder investigation, abduction cases. Some cases get like tons and tons of media coverage, and then others hardly get any. So uh, from the very beginning, I stated I wanted to try and focus on cases that didn't get as much coverage and uh, or weren't as well known. And so that's that's always been what I've tried to been trying to do. And ultimately, I want to start a nonprofit to help both the families of the lost because. Uh, private search efforts, so once SAR efforts stop, a private search can be upwards of $10,000 a day, especially when there are helicopters or drone teams involved. So ultimately, one of my main goals with this channel is any of the, now we just sort of reached the monetized level, so I'm going through the application process, I'm not technically monetized yet, but once we start getting to that, you know, that starts coming in. Um, I'm gonna have it set up so that the funds, now I'm still working with people on this because I don't even really know how the monetization stuff works fully yet. But uh, it's gonna be broken down into different categories. So some of the money is going to be uh, put into a fund for the families. Some is gonna go to SAR, uh, more SAR efforts, is going to go to me to help with uh, content creation right now I'm still making all these videos from my four-year-old phone and I understand that you know you guys will eventually want better quality and it, you know it'll be nicer to uh, make better quality for these missing people and also my other uh, videos but also to go towards things like I'm getting my or trying to get my uh, certification from NASAR training for that um, going to join certain searches so it's all focused on you know, helping families of the lost and SAR efforts. I'm trying to get more involved in that. I am going out west this summer. I'll be hiking parts of the Pacific Crest Trail, and uh, hopefully, I've been talking with a bunch of people. We're going to try and get together and do some just uh, volunteer searches. And if any of you guys are going to be the area, I, I would love to have you be a part of that. Of course, I have to meet with you know SAR people and make sure everything is okay and how to go about doing it because this is all new to me. So. Those of you that have, you know, further working knowledge of it, I'm all ears and I'm always open to suggestions. Just as long as the feedback is done in a, you know, constructive way, if you want to give me, you know, you know, a critique or constructive feedback, that's fine. Now, I know that a lot of you sort of found my channel from the video that I did on Yosemite. And first of all, I just want to say I have the utmost respect for David Politis. And that's one of the reasons that I've sort of gone out of my way to not cover cases that he's already done. But obviously with a place like Yosemite, it's got the most missing cases of any national park. So there is going to be some overlap. However, in that video, I focused 
on Sandra Johnson Hughes because at the time of the creation of the video, uh, there had been no other videos made on it, at least none that I could have found. And in all of my videos, in the description will be links to my sources. And, you know, I know that a lot of people just rip off other people's work, like, you know, Mr. Politis, the 411, but that's not my intent here in any way. In fact, he has a very unique or special criteria that he uses to cover cases. And, you know, that's great. And he's done more for missing cases than anybody plausibly. But that said, you know, there have been, you know, people covering and doing news stories on missing people for, for, for decades. And really with me, I don't have any criteria except that I try and find cases that didn't get as much coverage or newer cases that uh, we might still have some, some chance of locating the person. In some cases, uh, I, I made a video only a few days after the person went missing. But ultimately, you know, just trying to help between you guys and myself and anybody who wants to because a lot of times it's the hikers and campers and backpackers that end up finding clues to these cases and the more people that know the better chances some have of being resolved so um, but anyway I just wanted to sort of give that brief introduction for those of you that may be new and I really appreciate your your coming and subscribing and uh, all your comments and I always try and reply to every single comment so um, sometimes it may take me a little bit of time like a day or two but I have my email in the information description uh, about, about my page as well as all this information that I'm presenting about um, you know what the channel is striving to do but obviously some of these are really big goals and I, I can't do it by myself I mean I have a full-time job that is often very demanding so you know, I'm going to need your guys' help to, to get to some of these goals, and I think together we can get there, so, all right. All right, guys, now I wanted to talk about uh, Mount Whitney and a lot of disappearances and deaths that have occurred over the last couple years and just in general. It is the highest peak in the continental United States. It is in the Sierra uh, Nevada in California and it it's roughly 14,505 feet high. It is 13 miles west of the town of Lone Pine, California. It's roughly a 22 mile round trip hike and it does require, uh, they do sort of monitor it via a permit system through the summer months up to October. And it's a very popular destination for people to go and hike and it's about a 6,000 feet of elevation gain, and it's a beautiful sight if you can meet, make it to the top. But unfortunately, more and more people are uh, either disappearing or dying on this attempt, because especially if there's snow, it, it is a very treacherous hike. And you'll see as we get into this that unfortunately, a lot of people have lost their lives here. And according to the Parks Department and people that are very familiar with Mount Whitney, this is due to an increasing number of people visiting and an increasing number of people that have absolutely no hiking or climbing skills whatsoever. Uh, there is this emergency shelter there, but it's got a metal roof, which obviously is not good in lightning storms. And it's, it's just, you know, one of those things where, yeah, you know, if you're prepared and you know what you're doing, you have the right gear, it can be a great hike, but unfortunately, more and more people go up there, sometimes having never hiked anything before in their lives. In 2017, a 75-year-old community college professor from Texas fell to his death on the mountain. In May 2018, two separate people died in two separate falls. And then uh, John Lee, a 68-year-old man, died five days after he disappeared when he separated from his hiking group during an excursion on Mount Whitney. Now in this one, search and rescue crews uh, were looking for him for, for days, but couldn't find him. Then on uh, the following Sunday after he disappeared, a helicopter that was searching in Sequoia National Park found his body at the base of the mountain, southwest west slope at about 14,494 feet, uh, the summit being only a little further above where he was found. In June of 2019, the body of hiker Ling Dao was located on the north side of Mount Whitney in Sequoia National Park. Now this one kind of really, I mean, 
Dow was reported missing to Inua County Sheriff's Department on Friday, June 4th after not reporting to work. And according to them, Dow flew into Las Vegas on Tuesday, June 11th, had planned to summit Mount Whitney on June 12th, drive back to Las Vegas after summiting and catch a red eye flag flight back home to work on Thursday, June 13th. I mean, just that plan seems so absurd to me, especially like if you consider the the actual summiting of Whitney in 2019 when it was a record snow year. In any event, the Inyo County Sheriff's Office contacted the rental car company that Dow had used and was advised that, advised that Dow had returned the vehicle at 10 a.m. that Friday, June 14th. But after continuing calls from his family regarding Dow, the Sheriff's Office decided to contact the rental company again, at which point differing information provided. According to them, the rental car company had accidentally updated the information. And anyway, the vehicle description and license plate was provided to the Sheriff's and a day later the rental vehicle was located at the whitney portal parking lot prompting the search efforts which didn't start until june 16th now i bring you back to the fact that you know he had planned to do this all the way back on june 11th so by the time the search and rescue efforts did locate him it wasn't locate him it wasn't until june 19th of 2019 and he was found deceased this next case is probably one of the most painful and just because of the circumstances a 34 year old woman from california died after falling 100 feet on the mount whitney and spent two nights alone freezing in freezing temperatures this case happened in the fall of 2020 and her name is cassandra bravo a nurse and mother of two from loma linda had gone for a day hike on Mount Whitney Trail in California's Inyo National Forest on Thursday when she slipped and fell down the rocky terrain. On the day that she did this hike, she was actually in Lone Pine visiting with her cousin. And actually this was just a spur of the moment thing. And apparently this was like her personality. She did these kind of things all the time. But unfortunately this had a very awful outcome. Uh, her injuries weren't fully detailed, but Bravo was able to actually crawl under a log for her protection as she waited for help and she was only in a tank top and uh, like yoga pants, which I, I just can't imagine because the temperatures were said to be like in the 20s with uh, wind chill. And unfortunately, by the time the emergency staff got to her and got her to the hospital, uh, just due to her injuries and the, the, the temperatures, uh, she did not survive the ordeal. And I just can't imagine the hell being out on that mountain in freezing temperatures in a tank top and yoga pants and uh, it just breaks my heart. The most recent case, which happened on April 15th of this year, a man by the name of Salou Sifuentes Escalante, a 36-year-old man from Conroe, Texas, arrived at the Whitney Portnoll on Thursday, April 15th, 2021, with intention of hiking Whitney as a day climb. And it wasn't until three days later on Sunday, April 18th, that the Inyo Cano Sheriff's Office received notification that he was overdue. So again, this, you know, that he should have been reported overdue, you know, that day. So it's very important that we always tell people where we're going to be. There was an unsuccessful search on Monday, April 19th. The following day, Tuesday, April 20th, 12 search and rescue members were inserted on the ground by an Army Chinook helicopter with teams distributed from the summit down to Mirror Lake. Because of the location of Kings Canyon National Park was also involved as the search area included the west side of Mount Whitney, which is in the park. The Kings Canyon officials notified the Inyo County Sheriff's Department at approximately 11 a.m. on Tuesday, April 20th, that they had obtained a search warrant for the review cell phone data because they had revealed a potential location for the subject and a Chinook helicopter was again dispatched to investigate and locate the missing hiker's body which was south of the main Whitney Trail at approximately 11,600 feet elevation in a steep snowy north facing chute. He had apparently been ascending the chute when he slipped and fell. It is unknown at this time whether he was carrying the proper equipment like an ice sack or crampons. The Sheriff's Office press release went on to say that the Chinook helicopter was able to move a team of rescuers to a landing zone 1,200 feet below the site. Rescuers were able to access the site via a steep snow climb and were able to assist in the recovery of Mr. Escalante late in that afternoon by using a hoist into the Chinook. 
So just to give you an idea of the agencies that were involved in this, the Inyo Search and Rescue, the Inyo Sheriff, the China Lake Mountain Rescue Group, Kings Canyon National Park, aerial assistance were provided by CHP, China Lake Naval Weapons Station, and Army National Guard. So as you can see, a lot goes into these search and rescue efforts, even when it's for the recovery of a body. So what can we learn from all these tragedies and deaths? I'm hoping that uh, if people do decide to go out to Mount Whitney, you know, research it beforehand, know the weather. If it's a high snow year, bring crampons and an ice axe. And even if it's not, bring them just in case because, you know, weather in the mountains can change on a dime and talk to other people that have been up there and find out what's the weather has been like and what the terrain has been like because I think unfortunately a lot of people don't understand what they're getting into or who knows for all different types of stories but it's also not something you want to rush like you know you want to give yourself enough time and if it's not something you think you can handle while you're doing it there's no shame in turning back the mountain will always be there and this would be a smart place to carry a first aid kit even if it's just a small one you can get a really good decent first aid kit that's under five ounces and carry an emergency blanket those are like two ounces and cost a couple dollars and they are lifesavers this is another one of those areas that just demands respect and knowledge and it can be a really really great accomplishment if you plan it right and take your time and you know just have the proper expectations and know what you're getting into it's it's horrible learning about all these deaths and disappearances and these are just to name a few and like i said in the beginning apparently according to the park staff around there it's it's getting worse because more and more people are attempting it that really have no um, experience now i'm not saying that is true with all these people i just mentioned obviously some of them were very experienced and tragedies befell them and my thoughts and prayers go out to the families of each and every one of them all right guys that's the end of this video i just wanted to say thank you everybody for watching and wishing everybody that's going out there this year hiking or backpacking camping whatever it is safe travels and just wishing you happiness and a great spring and summer and i will see you guys in the next one take care